Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the next episode of the Thoughtful Solutions podcast. Apologize for the bit of a delay in this episode. Uh, there's been some personal things going on uh, between my wife being pregnant, some work stuff. Uh, it's just been delayed a little bit, but uh, we are coming back at it for the next episode. And today we're going to be talking about culture, sociology, and ethics relating to a market capitalist system. It's going to be pretty generalist topics here. We're not going to get super in-depth. Obviously, people spend years of their lives delving specifically into different cultures or sociology as a science or philosophy and ethical behavior, whatever it is. But we're going to just talk more broadly about these individual things and sort of relate them back to the train of thought that we are proposing here on the podcast. And then as a preview for next week, as we mentioned in the last episode, we are coming close towards the end of the uh, Foundations playlist here. The next episode will be talking about dedicating your life force to an activity, which I think will be a pretty lighthearted discussion uh, just about human potential, human dreams, and and what that means in relation to the train of thought that we are providing here. And then the last episode in the Foundations playlist is going to be talking about the boogeyman fallacy. And then after that, we're going to have sort of a summation episode talking about all of the Foundation playlists and how sort of me and Chris have developed uh, the sort of progression of the podcast that we have so far and then what we have for the future. And after that, it'll be very exciting. But back on to today's topic, uh, let's start off with culture. So with culture, we're going to be talking about it as it relates to sort of the Western idea of, of culture that has really developed over the last 100, 200 years, not necessarily sort of the isolated different cultural pockets that exist through the world that we've kind of touched on before in past episodes, but really this this large beast of, of a topic that is sort of Western societal culture. And I think it's going to be related definitely towards how pervasive the market system is when it comes to cultural behavior and what is sort of idealized what people are shifting towards, what kind of artistic, musical, food-based, you know, anything involving what you would consider like a cultural aspect and how that has really been uh, pervasively sort of ingrained in by, by the economic system. So Yeah, right. It's like culture as a whole, not just, you know, when you said individual pockets, it would take forever to talk about like the past 200 years of our evolving culture, we mean how it relates to the socioeconomic system that we live in. Yeah, exactly. And more specifically from like sort of this this Western capitalist um, or just the capitalist mindset in general. Yeah. I think, you know, again, you could spend a long time talking about like tribal cultures and, and different ones that exist in isolated pockets. But again, that's not really what... Uh, what we are trying to talk about here. So with culture, I think a good point to start off with is how idealized certain things are. Uh, One of the modes this is done through is like advertising and marketing. It is so pervasive throughout our daily lives. We see labels of different brands, TV commercials, radio ads, visual ads, billboards, everything you can imagine, different branding logos, everything that sort of intertwines with that. It is bombarding us. Thousands of of miniature ads every day typically come across your average individual. Mm -hmm. And that can also be extrapolated towards things like the music industry, which has become definitely a beast in Western culture and how there are certain images that have really become popular, especially in the modern day of, you know, people talking about like money, sex and drugs as like the, the main focal point that people really gravitate towards. Not saying that that's obviously 
the entirety of the music industry, but it's become a trend over the last, you know, 10, 20, 30 years that something like that has, has very much been uh, glorified as opposed to sort of the traditional modes of instrumentation, classical music, or even music from, you know, the 20th century, stuff like that. And then also sort of the individual figures of, of industry as well that have sort of taken on cultural aspects of, of being like role models and idols and stuff, whether it's CEO type figures and founders like Elon Musk types, or just even individuals that might own like social media influencing companies or like certain even YouTubers and social media and stuff where they have this sort of brand motive where they have sponsors and product placements and all kinds of stuff. It's it's really become pervasive in today's culture, especially with the internet increasing the ease of access that people have to sort of getting themselves out there, which is a good thing. But obviously, being in this, this market psychology, there's also that toxic aspect of like how am I going to monetize something you know it's it's not purely my idea but it's like how am I going to translate this to making a buck as opposed to either like the pure artistic motive or you know the pure like trying to share knowledge or just having fun with a group of people whatever it might be or just having cool discussions it's like how am I going to monetize this Mm -hmm. so how do you think that's affected people like on a grand scale you know through years of you're just being shown this constantly in your life bombarded with uh people telling you you know what success actually looks like and and the higher levels you know what 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 effect do you think that's having to like this the culture of people well i think it's become more blatant as time has gone on and i just you know i just mentioned it in like the the music industry example people are literally like they they aspire to the money and wealth. Yeah, and, show it off. Yeah, yeah, and they they people want to be in that position and people are always going to strive to to get to that crazy position of of power or whatever. And statistically it's it's not going to happen for most if not the majority of of the human population of, as we've discussed about before. Yeah. The, if anything, the gap is getting bigger. It actually shows that the gap is getting bigger you know, between the top top of people and everybody else. Yeah, and I think it's just it's it's gotten like so ingrained in the psychology of of yep. people involved in this Western culture that you know that that is what we're striving for. That is the idea of we have to reach. I have to reach that point, or else my life is a failure. Or, you know, I'm not reaching my max potential or whatever. You know, I, I have to really stretch myself thin and, and figure out how I can market myself or, you know, think of some some next big tech convention or being mm-hmm. some big social media influencer or musician who's going and making hundreds of millions of dollars, you know, selling out tours everywhere. Like, it's just it's become so much more blatant with how people idealize these images and these ideas of, of what success is or what it yeah. it takes to kind of reach, reach that pinnacle. Whereas, you know, you look even like back in the 20th century, I mean, yeah, obviously rich people like still existed back then, but the wealth gap wasn't as big as it is today, even though it was still pretty big back then. But, these figures sort of stayed a little bit more behind the picture. You know, they always existed. They always have. But it wasn't nearly to the yeah. degree that it is today. With- right, right. Like the, the grand mass of people back then, their goals every day of like the culture back then wasn't gold and, and you know, luxuries and whatnot. It was probably family and survive, like farm, survival, things like that. Yeah, farm survival, working your nine to five, you know, typical white picket fence type stuff, you know, during the 40s right. and 50s. Or if you go back farther, as you said, 
people worked in the agricultural sector. So those are just your typical family situations. But as sort of urbanization, globalization, the connection of mm-hmm. the internet and technology have really... And definitely where we are now. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. a couple and... of decades of having internet, like you said. And as that sort of shifted the the cultural zeitgeist, for lack of a better word, that's how it's manifested. Is like it's it's sort of become front and center. Is is the money, the power, the imagery, the branding, you know, and just and just plastering your face and your ego wherever it goes. Even if it's not directly, as I said, you know, there there are a lot of rich people who who do do that as their means of, you know, sort of perpetuating that, but. Even some of the more, not necessarily secretive, but even like, you know, like, like the Bezoses and the Bill Gates, you know, they're not necessarily like out on social media crazy, like, like an Elon Musk type figure, but they are definitely still out there in terms of an example and sort of spreading their tendrils out uh, through cultural means. Even touching back to the episode we just did on charity and philanthropy and stuff, that can sort mm-hmm. of be a way for them to, to, influence the culture of how things going are going and sort of perpetuating a lot of those norms yep yep it's still you know still telling you the same thing of like oh you should have this amount of money to be able to do what i'm doing you know if it's just you're building wells in africa whatever his philanthropy idea was but still it still aids into the mindset of everybody nowadays about what it looks like to to what it should your life should look like and and it doesn't so you're probably depressed about it <laughs> yeah so that that's kind of the the idea of, of of the cultural sort of topic is just the free market capitalism socioeconomic system has really become just an integral part of of western culture and while that doesn't mean that every part of it is inherently and blatantly related to it. I would say a lot of the more up-in-your-face aspects or some of the aspects that you're exposed to more nowadays have definitely gravitated towards that sort of mode of thinking. Mm -hmm. So I I think that's the main point that we're trying to make here when when talking about culture, uh, is just that it's become so saturated with this kind of mindset of of branding, getting yourself out there, trying to make a buck wherever you can, which obviously in this current paradigm, you need to, to, to put food on the table, but it, it goes even beyond that. As we exampled with what a place like America was back in like the forties and fifties, or even further back, you know, obviously not saying that it was perfect by any means, but before sort of the urbanization, the internet and technology integration that we have these days, the ease of spreading information, the pervasiveness of marketing and advertising, everything has really yeah. coalesced to produce sort of this this modern uh, capitalist money-driven culture that, that we have today, in the West right. at least. Right, which probably blends in well with the next topic, the you know sociology um and how like it relates to the socioeconomics because you know economics is how we're we're functioning as a society at the time and if this system has us constantly you know in that type of mindset of being being you know the money and being uh grandiose pictures of what your life should be like then it's gonna have a negative effect probably on your mind and like how your sociology is wired up Oh God, yeah, and it it really does relate towards you know other things that we've talked about in past episodes as well. Sociology, just as a quick reminder, is the study of social life, social change, and the social causes and consequences of human behavior. So social life and social change can be related towards class struggles, change as uh, as time has gone on. Um, you know, we brought up the example of like how 100, 200 years ago, uh, you know, 150 years ago, however long it was, you know, slavery was a very normalized sort of activity. Whereas as we got towards the more modern period and people are just like, you know, what the fuck? Like, that's gross. Why were people doing that? You know, that's, that's abhorrent. And 
you could apply that to like today where we might look at the sort of level of environmental destruction that's going on you know people 100 years mm -hmm. from now might be like dude the amount that people were destroying the environment and just wrecking the planet that that was gross yeah. and disgusting like like what were these people thinking about so yeah. sociology really can encompass a, a lot of things with with the social change aspect but your social life is very much related towards your economic behavior as well as i said in today's paradigm a lot of it is revolved around your economic uh, economic behavior how you acquire money to pay the bills put, put food on the table um to really sort of perpetuate your existence you can't distance yourself from that that economic connection and mm -hmm. a lot of the social aspects of your life sort of spring out from that so that's why we focus so much on socioeconomics is because it is such an intertwined topic and once you begin to see how much free market capitalism as a socioeconomic system is like entrenched in your daily life you can really take that and be like hmm how does this really function like like what is this doing to you know my social interactions my my psychology and how mm -hmm. how is this really like affecting my life how does the system function and what what is sort of driving like the larger society as a whole yeah hopefully if you can you know kind of take yourself back and look at it as a whole from that perspective it would help you like better be able to plan out some ideas on how to maybe run your life a little bit more in a, like a viable natural way instead of being such a i just, I just want to just like say slave to the system i mean to a degree yeah and obviously as the system still exists in its functionality like we have to be unwilling participants in it to a degree oh, yeah. but you know it's uh, again one of the goals of this podcast and just having these these sorts of discussions in general is to drive people to to really question the reality that they're in to to take an objective look at how the system functions and to sort of just plant a seed to figure out you know how, how does the system work and and why are people incentivized to do this or that or why does it function like this you know just sort of mm -hmm. questioning why things are the way they are and, mm -hmm. and really just kind of opening your mind's eye to that and that definitely perpetuates towards human behavior because a lot of human behavior is sort of ingrained and incentive based because people are really they're, they're, they're products of the system as we've talked about before and if the incentive is to go out participate in the economy make money climb the the economic ladder and do all that kind of stuff that that's going to be like a big driver in in your human behavior and mm -hmm. as we talked about in the new human rights movement episode that's going to uh really bring out some negative consequences because of the pure sort of mentality of a free market capitalist system competition versus cooperation greed versus self selflessness all all the, all the other sort of positive versus negative dualities you can think of it's always going to skew more towards the negative side of things unfortunately because that's what it takes to really thrive in a competitive market system is you have to focus on yourself and and that competitive mentality to get the leg up over the other people in the market can you kind of see the positive feedback loop that's created here where yeah you know, the more you live in the system of you know this this type of market sociology uh, and, and you have this human behavior as a consequence of that then the more that, that behavior causes the that market sociology mentality to happen yeah and with people just being so ingrained in it as well it, it very much is almost a second nature especially people who have been participating in the systems for their whole lives because they were born into it and they've become quote-unquote successful from it or whatever they're going to do nothing but defend it and justify their behavior and everything they've done in that sphere 
you know, not not saying that everybody that has ever done anything in the system has been wholly negative, but the pure mechanics of the system and what it breeds cannot be taken away in its negative aspects. You know, because unfortunately people are products of the system and you are going to be participating in a system of, of relative negativity whether you like it or not. And are you going to be somebody who is gung-ho to like hold the system up because it's gotten you where it is? Or are you going to kind of step back and question how can we make things better? Which and how, is, how can we change things? That's probably the exact type of question segue you need to ask to bring us into ethics because that's literally you know like type of system ethic person versus the type of like real truthful ethics person you know are you gonna do you think it's justifiable to defend this system because it's gotten you where you're at like you just said versus you know do you see what's actually going on and you know want to like start asking more questions about the system and probably change your ethics about it talking about ethics you you can have like a true like philosophical centered view of ethics versus sort of your systemic view of ethics you know what is ethical within a free market capitalist system and the behaviors that occur in in that sort of format versus you know on a pure person to person basis or group versus group basis you know, without any other external factors, like you can compare those two ethical norms and show that they are going to be completely different from each other. Could be the type of person who's seen success in, in the comp- competition against others, you know, versus the one, it's almost like, you know, person to nature, even type of ethics, like, like how you were saying, a hundred years from now, we could look at the way we're doing things and just be like, wow, we're dumb and that's so fucking gross like we really just put our plastic in the ocean like that that's okay okay no one really thought about that ahead of time did they yeah but like in the system that is not inherently like unethical because they're what might be considered unethical you could even link towards like governmental control and and sort of the legal system because that's how that is is sort of controlled because the government is like a weird regulator that uh, is is pretty inefficient in that regard. But Mm -hmm. that's sort of how the ethics are defined in a way. Whereas like, oh, you embezzled and and laundered money or whatever, that's unethical. We're going to throw you in a jail cell. But, (laughs) you know, a multi-billionaire CEO fires, you know, 3,000 workers and closes down a factory where all these families aren't going to have jobs, people are going to have to go on hard times. That's not looked at as unethical. <laughs> right. You that know, was in the realm of business. It's just business. You yeah, know, that's just business. business. That's just their market power to to do whatever they want in that regard. It's, you know, it's it's very much a skewed reality. Right, right. So you would think maybe what do the ethics of a person look like in in a viable system, you know, what we should strive to be. I think that should be, again, as you sort of mentioned, like like the natural sort of ethics. Uh, mm-hmm. You could stretch it back to like pre-Neolithic revolution, like human settlements and, and tribal societies and stuff where people had to work together cooperatively to survive in the harsh reality of, of existing in nature with little to no technology and sort of having that communal gift giving spirit having to work together to survive and not really having an incentive to be violent towards one another because you're already in a world that is pretty tough to live in and god forbid there is internal conflict that would compromise you know you or your loved ones or your tribe mates even further that would just be icing on the cake for a bad situation to occur and right and just just being like a good person in general not to bring a religious mode to things but sort of the the golden rule treat people how you want to be treated 
really just just being just, just like a a beacon of of relative positivity really kind of setting the example for how you would like to uh, have others treat you I, I think is is the real sort of natural way to to look at that ethical side of things and that is i think a good baseline that drives natural ethics and behavior you know natural yeah. true whatever precursor you want to put in front of that but um uh, you know and and as we said contrasting that with the sort of market side of things i think it it very much shows the difference between what is the system driving you to do and what is happening to you as an individual that you would interact with other people with like how is your interaction with others going to show how people should be treated across the board you know being yeah. being that exemplar right which is, is still absolutely like you know millions of people right now today living their life and living by these type of ethics you know being a good person uh following the golden rule <clears throat> to the best that they can but it's like all these people still live in this system though so we all we all can kind of see these grander like effects that you know the system is putting down on us and still try and be the 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 positive side yeah and and i think a lot of people really do sort of strive for that regardless of sort of the systemic side of the ethical discussion but it's also sort of a dual nature thing. Like you could have one side of your actions be towards more the natural ethics side of things, but on the other side of the equation, you know, your your behavior at the workplace and the actions that that take there, or in just your general economic behavior, could be vastly different than how you portray yourself in that regard as well. So I think sort of that weird dualist nature is something that is definitely going to change as a socioeconomic shift occurs more towards mm. a, a natural viable system and you're going to see that trend sort of shift as those incentive and, and market principles uh, really start to fall to the wayside as a better more sustainable system comes about uh for on the socioeconomic level yeah i see i see what you're saying you know, because as the as these building blocks of you know like our system change, it'll change the human behavior, like a chain reaction, kind of. Yeah, because as we've mentioned before, nature is the most referent like example of a viable system, and how you would act as on a natural basis without any economic influence or whatever is pretty much the the best baseline for what should be an example of really ethical behavior and anything else sort of needs to be built around that as opposed to being a separate mentality that has no referent to nature or how we existed prior towards you know the historic market capitalism neolithic revolution all that sort of change the breaking of the Malthusian trap and how all that has sort of progressed. So I, I think sort of reverting back to that side of things is is going to be a trend that we're going to see as time goes on. And I think people have generally shifted towards that way anyway as population has grown and as your average person has just realized the flaws in the system. Um, it's just sort of exacerbated that change as well. Sounds good. Yeah. Uh, so I think that'll be pretty much it for today's episode, guys. So again, we were talking about culture, sociology, and ethics, just a general sort of touching overview on all these topics and sort of relating it back to free market capitalism and the socioeconomic structure that it is and how much it affects our daily lives and activity. Again, as I mentioned at the beginning of the episode, we will be talking about dedicating your life force to an activity uh, coming up in the next episode, guys. But thank you so much for listening, and we will catch you guys in the next episode.